when the Cold War had been going on for almost two decades on October 14, 1962, the United States discovered ballistic missiles in Cuba given to them by the Soviets. Cuba, from the time of the Fidel Castro takeover, was a communist country and a Soviet ally. These ballistic missiles were aimed at the U.S. to, quote, prevent an invasion of Cuba, although it was mostly to increase the Soviet strike capacity. One of these invasions took place a year ago in the failed Bay of Pigs invasion. This event called the USSR to send missiles to Cuba. The Cuban Missile Crisis lasted 13 days and was a great triumph for humanity because a tragic nuclear war was avoided and eventually led to the fall of the Berlin Wall and the fall of the Soviet Union. The Calamitous Cold War, the political and militant triumphs of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Since the Bolshevik uprising in 1917, Western governments had always been wary of the idea of communism, and some refused to acknowledge the USSR. At the conclusion of World War II, the relations between the USSR and US plummeted, and the Cold War began. The Cold War led to the nuclear arms race where both countries built up weapons to increase their nuclear strike capacity. Joseph Stalin, the leader of the USSR at the time, promised at the Yalta Conference in 1945 that he would not take over Eastern Europe. However, he seemed to forget this as he led the USSR's conquest of Eastern Europe, making Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Estonia, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Latvia, Lithuania, Moldova, Russia, Tajikistan, Ukraine, and Uzbekistan part of the United Socialist Soviet Republics, USSR. Aggressive conduct, if allowed to grow unchecked and unchallenged, ultimately leads to war. John F. Kennedy We will bury you. Nikita Khrushchev on Western governments. The U.S. was afraid of Fidel Castro turning Cuba into another communist country because the previous Cuban dictator was an ally to the U.S. and was pro-American. Castro, on the other hand, thought it was time for Cubans to take back more control of their country, and was rather anti-America, making him against the U.S. and therefore a Soviet ally. The U.S. proceeded to organize the, failed, Bay of Pigs invasion on Cuba. Essentially, this invasion was to have Cuban exiles invade Cuba and make Cuba anti-Castro. The invasion took place on April 17, 1961, and was meant to be kept a secret, even while happening. However, during the invasion on the beach, a nearby radio station picked up the signal, broadcasting every detail of the invasion. Cuba saw that the U.S. was against them, therefore making them an enemy of the U.S. and an ally of the Soviet Union. In May 1962, the Soviet Union began placing missiles in Cuba. The U.S. government says that a socialist regime here threatens the U.S. security, but what threatens the security of the North American people is the aggressive policy of the warmongers of the United States, Fidel Castro. Meanwhile, we will not accept Mr. Castro's attempts to blame this nation for the hatred with which his one-time supporters now regard his repression, John F. Kennedy. Many consider the Cuban Missile Crisis to have started on October 14, 1962, but the truth is that the Soviets have been sending missiles for many months under the guise that they were all defensive weapons. That fateful day, a U-2 spy plane found photographic evidence that the Soviets had been lying and there were currently unoperational ballistic missiles pointed at the U.S. in Cuba. Immediately, the picture was processed, and on the morning of October 16, 1962, President John F. Kennedy received word that the Soviets had nuclear missiles in Cuba. Throughout the rest of the event, John F. Kennedy and his crew of professionals and advisors, dubbed the XCOM Executive Committee, struggled over what to do about the situation. They came to the conclusion that having missiles in Cuba was unacceptable, and many options were on the table. The most considered ones were to bomb the missile sites in Cuba solely, another full-scale invasion of Cuba, like the failed Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961, or to blockade Cuba so that no more supplies could get through. Kennedy went forward with the blockade idea and, s and sent the Navy to quarantine the island of Cuba, while he also delivered a demand that the missiles be removed. On October 22, 1962, the president, on a TV broadcast, 
told the American people about the threat in Cuba. He also told them that the U.S. was quarantined in Cuba and that he had sent a demand to Soviet Union leader Nikita Khrushchev that the, mus- that the missiles be removed. Many Americans, fearing nuclear war would break out, hoarded supplies, and schools all around America practiced duck and cover drills frequently. Sadly, on October 27th, Major Rudolf Anderson was shot down over Cuba in an unarmed reconnaissance plane, and both leaders quickly realized that this was spiraling out of control. Khrushchev then sent a message to Kennedy saying that they would remove the missiles from Cuba if the U.S. promised not to invade Cuba. Also, in private, the U.S. agreed to to remove missiles from Turkey. Good evening, my fellow citizens. This government, as promised, has maintained the closest surveillance of the Soviet military buildup on the island of Cuba. Within the past week, unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. The purpose of these bases can be none other than to provide a nuclear strike capability against the Western Hemisphere. We will not prematurely or unnecessarily risk the cost of a worldwide nuclear war in which even the fruits of victory would be ashes in our mouths, but neither shall we shrink from that risk any time it must be faced. John F. Kennedy. Do you think that when two representatives holding diametrically opposing views get together and shake hands that the contradictions between our systems will simply melt away? What kind of daydream is that? Nikita Khrushchev. We're eyeball to eyeball and the other fellow just blinked. Dean Rusk, U.S. Secretary of State, 1961 to 1969 on the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mankind must put an end to war or war will put an end to mankind. John F. Kennedy. Shortly after the crisis ended, the relationship between Cuba and the Soviet Union weakened for a while. Fidel Castro blamed Khrushchev for abandoning the Cuban Revolution by backing down to the U.S. Relationships between the U.S. and several European allies also weakened because Kennedy didn't inform them on the treaties made between him and Khrushchev. One positive thing to come out of the crisis was the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Signed on April 5, 1963, This treaty removed the ability for either superpower to test nuclear weapons above ground, underwater, or in space. After almost eight years of compromises, the tension between the two superpowers created by the Cuban Missile Crisis is what caused this treaty to finally be made. It is insane that two men sitting on opposite sides of the world should be able to decide to bring an end to civilization. John F. Kennedy If we cannot end our differences, at least we can help make the world a safe place for diversity. Nikita Khrushchev In the years following the Cuban Missile Crisis, many tragic events happened, such as the Vietnam War, when North Vietnam, backed by the Soviet Union, and South Vietnam, backed by the United States, fought, and the boycotting of the 1980 Olympics, when the U.S. boycotted the Olympics because the Soviet Union didn't remove their troops from Afghanistan. However, things like the strategic arms limitations, talks involving the U.S. and the Soviet Union, where negotiations were made on nuclear weapon restraints and limits, helped to stop the hatred from both sides. The Cuban Missile Crisis showed that however much you hate your opponent, compromise is not impossible. Leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. John F. Kennedy Do not pray for easy lives. Pray to be stronger men. John F. Kennedy The Cuban Missile Crisis is important because it was the closest the world came to the tragedy of a nuclear war. The compromise was not just a victory for the U.S., but a victory for all mankind. Unfortunately, the wounds caused throughout the Cold War have not yet healed completely, but this event in the time certainly made its strides toward the end of the Cold War and the fall of the Berlin Wall. November 1991. As Joseph Rablat, a Polish scientist who worked on the Manhattan Project, says, the Cold War is over, but the Cold War thinking survives.